too sure how much time we've got down here in the holding area but if you can have a look around the paddock you can see some absolutely beautiful cars John Kimmons Rover Vitesse here is second in the championship but if we have a look over here this is the uh, championship leader and his lovely little Golf GTI Charlie Cope let's have a quick word with him as he's uh, getting ready getting prepped getting psyched for the track Good morning she's uh, running off how are you doing championship leader you looking forward to this uh, I'm not sure what you're looking forward to, but yeah, it should be good. Yeah, it's a bit warm out here. Yeah, um, is this the first time around uh, Cadwell? No, we were here last year as well. Um, went really well last year, not so well this year, I don't know why, but yeah, it's the second time we've been around here. SMRC really treats you, aren't they? Uh, last time out was a reverse at uh, Knock Hill, now we're at beautiful Cadwell Park. Yes, it's lovely, it's a fantastic circuit. It's great, great, great place to come, yeah. Yeah, you're getting warm, yeah? Very yes. <laughs> <laughs> Smelting it in here. Yeah, all right, well, good luck. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. And uh, as we're here, let's uh, go and speak to John Kimmond in his Rover. If we can keep up. Um, third in the championship is Russell uh, Elliot Patterson, Patterson. Sorry, in his Morgan. Well, let's see if we catch up with him as well. Uh, now, John is very, very fond of going sideways. I'm not too sure it's going to work this uh, this round out. John, um, I don't think uh, sideways is the way forward around here, is it? Well, it's a really good slalom bit at the top here, so we'll try some drifting around there. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what's it like uh, compared to Knock Hill, driving the Vitesse around? It's, um, it's probably a faster flowing circuit, so there's, there's less of the power's not such a big deal here. So it's more keeping a constant speed and a momentum up through the corners. Yeah, is it getting caught out around the corners? It's, uh, it's not as uh, nimble around the, some of the corners as uh, the other cars on track? It does okay for the size of it it's uh, misleading so yeah it's quite stable so the long sweeping corner and um, if it does step out and drift i can just let it find its own way around rather than it being snappy and wanting to leave the track yeah, and uh, what's the plan just keep elliot behind you that's the plan try and get his best start i can and then um, it's really myself and andy that are going for um class e yeah. um, with alistair babti coming behind as well so the, i think the three of us will be the focus for ourselves. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Cheers. Let's uh, have a wander over to uh, Elliot in his beautiful V8 Morgan. Absolutely stunning thing if you could just have a look. Elliot, uh, um, you've got a benefit here of not having a, a roof. Uh, you're going to be nice and cool. Yeah, I don't envy the guys with the hard tops. It must be <laughs> way too hot in there. Got my own air conditioning. Yeah, what's the Morgan like around Cadwell? They're brilliant, you know, it's probably my favourite track in the UK. I'm sure a lot of people say that, but the Morgans are really well suited with the, the big fast flowing section up at the top. It's really nice. Yeah, love it. All right, well, uh, well, good luck. Yeah, thank you. Important thing, just trying to win my class. And then the fun part, try and keep up with the big boys ahead. Have fun. Okay, thank you. Cheers. Uh, and with that, I'll hand you back to Lewis. A bit of a delay, so he'll talk you through all the action. There's the cars heading out into the heading out onto the track to get going. There's a 78 car on your screen right there, of course. The 78 car in the bright, bright green colour scheme, and it's Andrew Graham in the Triumph TR8. And we see my favourite car, um, of course, being the 27 of Martin Reynolds, um, which is of course in the Ford Escort. So. There's plenty of cars and plenty of different styles of cars. You can see open roofs, you can see saloons, you can see sports, you can see everything, and you can see it all here at SMRC at Caswell Park. It's been the away round of the championship. We are over halfway into the season, and it's a season that's produced a lot of drama so far, and it's one which going to Cadwell Park at Frosan completely new into the mix and these drivers will be having a lot to get round with these classic cars they have a lot to get their head around and there's the number 50 which is of course um, Charles College and it's one that produces some great racing as we just seen, seen there in the Mini Cooper Cup car class um, it produces wheel to wheel racing but in these classic cars 
although it's racing, you almost don't want to damage it because these cars, of course, are classic. And it's one thing that is quite hard to find, and that is parts for some of these cars. So some of these drivers may be being a bit cautious, but at the end of the day, as soon as the lights go out, they will be going full throttle to the first corner and really just pushing it into coppice. And we wait for the drivers to head onto the grid, line up on the grid as they head out on before they head out on their green flag lap just to get the tires warm or warmed up, get the head almost warmed up because they've not been out track since the morning. So now these drivers head on to grid. It's quite a big field for these classic cars and it's one that will produce some great racing and I can assure you that. But we wait for these drivers to head out and we wait for them just to line up onto the grid and we just need to wait for what is going to be an exciting race because Russell Patterson will be starting in pole position on the Morgan and it's one that was a dominant performance for him. It was a four second gap to Andrew Graham in the Triumph TR8. So it's one that Russell, Mar Russell Patterson is going to want to try and convert into a race one. It's going to be one that he's going to want to do in his Morgan and just get a dominant victory and just carry that momentum into race two. But of course, this is racing, this is motorsport, this is the SMRC. It is, it, anything can happen at the end of the day. It's one which has a lot of classes in it, is the classic cars. And of course, this is the sport, Scottish Classic Sports and Saloon Championship, which is sponsored by the Ed Edinburgh Watch Company. So it's great to have great people involved in our sport and great people supporting our sport. So then we can come to great racetracks like this at Candle Park and give the drivers something completely different. But there we wait for the five second board to come out. And uh, sorry, the one minute board to come out before they head out on that warm up lap. The green flag waved at the back just to say all drivers are ready to get going. Everyone's ready to get going for this first race of the Classic Sports Saloons Championship and the second race of the day. The 32nd board ready to get shown to all the drivers. They'll be looking up, they'll be watching, they will be keeping tabs on them and they will be ready just to go for it and ready just to go for what is going to be an amazing race. And of course, this race also being 20 minutes long. So it's a race that is going to be quite long on these drivers. And maybe drivers such as Russell Patterson, who have an open top car, because of course he's in the Morgan, so he will, he might get a bit more airflow to his helmet, which might keep him a bit more cool, compared to, for example, Andrew Graham lining up next to him, which is stuck in a car, which sometimes can literally be a greenhouse for these drivers. So yeah, it's one thing I love to see in the Classic Championship is the Classic cars coming into play and you get to see the cars that they grew up with come back to life and be w how they should and that is race and then pushed to 110% and we're just waiting for the drivers to head out on this warm up like we're waiting for them just to make their way around as they come down park straight it's such a technical circuit you can see now just getting the engine right to the right temperature you know because it's sometimes these cars can overheat and when they overheat you, you just have to just try and control it, short shift, keep temperature down, keep a good amount of airflow, do not get grass in your radiator because as soon as you do, that's when it starts getting complicated. But now we head up to the to turn four, which is of course park, as we see on your screen right there, second position, Andrew Graham just waiting and waiting for this race start because he can see the red Morgan of Russell Patterson ready just to pounce and he's ready just to pounce and try and get past him because if Russell Patterson, if Russell Patterson can find his way past and just get in that first position, he could clear off. And I think Andrew Graham does know this, but of course this should be an excellent race as the drivers are quite a slow warm up up right now, um, but it's quite a big circuit for them. It's over two miles here at Caswell Park and it's something which is completely different for them. And it's something which of course has been the way around. It's a two point, one nine mile car circuit, which um, of course at Cadwell Park with it with us racing cars here and this being mainly a bike racing circuit, we do not use the chicane which is just coming out of Mansfield because it's so tight the chicane. And you can just see the chicane actually there, right hand side of your screen, that would be used in for example bike racing. But since we're racing cars, we just go straight past it and that allows the drivers just to head up a bit more speed and potentially lets them line up a pass slightly better before they head into the mountain section, which 
for example, in Michael Weddle's case, in race one for the Mini Cooper Cup cars, it showed that it can happen. But have you got a favourite car? Have you got a favourite driver? Let us know. Comment down below who you're supporting and who you're expecting to win this race. It should be a great race. I mean, although Russell Patterson put in a great lap time in qualifying, that was with barely any fuel in this car. This there, That is, of course, in qualifying trim. We are in race trim now. Anything can happen. These are, of course, classic cars. They can be sometimes a bit unreliable. So still everything to play for. You can just see now back section of the circuit heading around the final couple of corners before we get underway. And what is going to be, you can just hear the cars. They sound superb. And it's great hearing these cars pushed properly to their limits. And where they should be. And that is on a racetrack for us to enjoy and for the drivers to enjoy as we head around now towards the uh, towards the start finish line towards the start of races tension will start to build on the grid especially these two people on the front row russell patterson and andrew graham as they line up they have to wait so long for for david riley to line up at the back of the grid as it's 20 cars in this race and it's going to be an excellent race now we wait for these drivers to line up and all of them just line up. As, as I mentioned, Russell Patterson will have to be waiting quite a while there. So maybe his tyres might just get a bit cooler than he was expecting. Maybe his brakes might get a bit cooler, which can cause a walk up heading into turn one, heading into coppice. So everything is to play for. This is race one. We, we This is the first race of the weekend for these drivers. Of course, these drivers have been two races of the weekend so they still have another chance of this no matter what happens and we wait for the start marshal to show the board to s signify that we are close to starting the race it should be the five second board that will come out but we wait for final checks to be done on the grid before we can get underway in what is going to be an excellent race and you can see there five second board coming up and it shows that these drivers lights are on and we wait for the lights to come off it's quite a long hole and lights are off and we are going and russell patterson has almost stalled it on the line it was such a slow getaway so now russell patterson will he get the motor he's for the inside line though for this first corner and it looks like russell patterson will sell somehow lead the race and it, wow what a start that was there from Russell Patterson although he didn't get the good initial getaway he somehow managed to slot himself into first position but now it looks like Andrew Graham has dropped all the way back into third place but it looks like John Kinman has made his way up to second place and in and really just trying to find any way past in that Rover 13 13 uh, 13,500 so now it looks like John Kinman's going to try and find any way past and it looks like it was Russell Patterson who's going to be defending but now you can just see sideways action there from what is the Morgan and it, from, sorry what is the Rover and just trying to get that rear end out and just trying to get the car turned using the throttle to try and get the car turned and what is such a tight circuit but the Morgan of Russell Patterson leads the way from a Rover so it's really great just to see so many cars here and so many different types of cars all competing at the front and it's one thing that I personally love about classic sports and saloon class is I hear a lock up there on the brakes heading into the mountain. It will everyone make it through safely as we head over the mountain now. We wait for the drivers to then go to Hall Benz and really just try to get these cars turned. There is, of course, the 27 of Martin Reynolds on the Ford Escort and really just pushing on all these drivers on this first lap, getting in a good couple clean laps. And so there is that Ford Escort there making its way through with the 73 on its tail of Elliot Patterson. So Elliot Patterson also on the Mor uh, well, in the Morgan 8, just trying to find any way past the Ford Escort as we come across the time timeline for the first time. It is Russell Patterson who leads the way with a 1.5 second gap from John Kimman straight away. So John Kimman, he's made an excellent start on the 63 car and he's really just pushing on. And John Kimman, he's came from third place. He's made up moves on that first lap. You can just hear the cars. You can hear the different notes from the engines. It's something that is so great. Some of them almost sound like a tractor, I guess you could say, while others sound like full bre um, fire-breathing race cars. So it's something that I love about this class. It is completely different. Every single class, every single class and every single car is a almost unique in this class because the drivers have personal preferences of what race modifications they want to do to their car and of course they're being 
um, class A to class G, and then there's also a class um, H, which is a Ford Fiesta XR2 car. But there is a walk up on the brakes as we head round to what is Mansfield, and it's a great corner. You really just got to get the car turned in and just try to walk up brakes, which is so easy. And Gooseneck is also a place where you don't want to walk up the brakes because it's like Cadwell Park, like you're about to see here, as we head up the mountain corners whenever you go into one it usually straight away leads on to another as we head into hall bend you can just see it now it's one corner into another and then straight away you're here at the hairpin and then straight away you got to get it into barns and it's one thing that we love to see we love to see sideway action there and john kimmond he loves a bit of sideway action he loves getting that rear end out and of the car he said before the race he's going to try to get some drifting done because he enjoys it. It gives him some fun. But right now, Russell Patterson is having a lovely time as he sets the fastest lap of the race at 140.765. And he is already 2.5 seconds ahead of John Kimmond. So John Kimmond, you can see that gap there. He just, he's going to have to try and bridge it. I mean, there's four minutes into the race right now. Two laps into the race. He cannot let Russell Patterson get into this river. I mean, he needs to try just close the gap a little bit to see on Russell Patterson's pit board that the gap is closed and maybe pile on a bit more pressure, try force Russell Patterson into a mistake because we see that on the starting line there, Russell Patterson made a mistake. He got a bad initial getaway, but somehow he led the way into the first corner. He leads the way in this race with just two laps in. And there on your screen, it's fourth place man, Martin Reynolds and the 27 Ford Escort. But is um, Alistair Bapte that has made his way into fifth place and there's some smoke coming out one of the cars there as they head down to Mansfield and it looks like everything is okay maybe it's a small walk on the brakes and I believe that actually was Alistair who made that small walk up yeah it was so Alistair right now just trying to keep the car on the track and it's one thing that's easier said than done at this Cadwell Park circuit it's such such hot conditions right now it's one that throughout the day when these cars go out for the race too it's going to be even hotter so they have to get used to it they have to know what it feels like to do 20 minutes inside a race car it's a hot race car as we see john kimmond get inside the once again andrew graham will be seeing this and be thinking how is he managing that and just be hoping that it forced him into a mistake but john kimmond he is the most comfortable person when the car sideways i've never seen anyone so comfortable but there's a new lap record for the smrc classics in the c in the c class from russell patterson of a 140.765 so russell patterson leading the way um a race leader on the 72 car um, setting the fastest lap of the race and a new lap record so it's great to see um, of course Russell Patterson being in that Morgan Plus 8 so it's great to see a C-class car leading the way and a C-class car getting a new lap record but John Kimman though will still be hot in his tails although John there's there he is actually Russell Patterson, the new lap record holder of the C-Class, Classic Class, here at Caswell Park. And you can just see now, he's pushing on. He's feeling good. He's feeling confident. He'll be getting a nice, nice breeze through his helmet, which is going to help him quite a lot in these conditions. Arriving and almost having the greenhouse of a race car, as we see now, coming out of Mansfield towards the mountain now, just getting the car stopped, getting it turned and left, and then straight away, getting it turned and right, using a bit of curb on the exit before it heads up, it cuts off, you always need to go to the middle of the track before then you have to go back to the left because going over the mountain, it's a little bit uneven for these cars. And sometimes, especially on a rear wheel drive car, it can just unstable it. And that is not what you want. You do not want any wheel spike coming over that mountain. So there's Russell Patterson now making way through the picture as we come through Barnes to go around the start finish straight. And he will be trying to push on. Can he beat his own lap record and beat the fastest lap of the race this time around? Because he is looking so strong and he has a 140 point 593 that time round. So Russell Patterson, he's just putting in the lap times. There's another lap record from him that time round. Just two minutes ago, he bet the lap record, and now once again, he sets another lap record. So he's really showing John Kimmon the pace, and John Kimmon right now has nothing to respond with. But now, back markers are starting to get into play. There's David Riley, actually, that I believe Russell Patterson has caught up to. And there is the 78 car of Andrew Graham on the grass, heading into the park straight before we head into park. 
because now he still is getting pressure from Martin Reynolds and he's going to have to try and start thinking about defending and start thinking about taking that tighter line but whenever you start taking new lines you're not used to taking maybe you have to change your breaking mark marker a little bit and if you lock up that front wheel one bit i am sure martin will happily send it down the inside this martin right now is just on the back tail of him right now and he's just trying to find anyway past andrew graham and andrew graham is now making his way past bat markers so now bat markers coming into play it really really depends in racing whenever you hit them because it actually looks like john kinman has been held up from the bat markers that gap looks significantly smaller from what it was previously but now they head into the mountain section and it's still martin reynolds who's on andrew graham's tail end and he's really pushing on as we head over the mountain and now it looks like Martin Reynolds is going to have to make up time that he lost because Martin Reynolds he just hit the back marker at the wrong time he, had, he caught him going into Mansfield and he just couldn't find any way past but there will we see side the reactions this time of course we will you can almost see rear wheel marks just getting made from that corner and from that car of John Kinman every single lap but there's your race leader once again um, Russell Patterson and he's still pushing on of course the new lap record holder around this circuit but there we can see the fans watching on and enjoying seeing these classic cars getting pushed to their limits once again and it's great to see such a healthy grid as i said the 20 car grid here in the classic sports and saloon class but there's john kimmond once again pushing on as we head down park street once again and martin reynolds once again is on the back of andrew graham in third place this is for the final podium position but of course there's many, many classes in this, so although you're third place overall, you will not be third place in your class. So Andrew Graham right now making his way through Chris Curve, just heading around Chris Curve now before we head towards Gooseneck. Two tricky corners, one after another. Gooseneck, though, they're almost breaking on the inside curve before then they flick it round to the left and head down to Mansfield. Mansfield, of course, the farmer who, used, who built this circuit and made Cardinal Park exist to what we know and love. So now we can see them heading out of Mansfield. Power will be flat to the floor. Foot will be flat, flat to the floor. As of course, this is the classic sports and saloons that is sponsored by the Edinburgh Watch Company as they head around the mountain. Come up the mountain, come up the rise. You can't even see the start of the corner. It is that steep and it is a corner that is one of the most trickiest in the UK to get right. And it's one of the most iconic in the UK. It's up there with some of the legendary corners, such as the Rouge. But right now, we have about 10 minutes left in this race. Six laps in as Russell Patterson comes across the line once again. And he leads the way now um, by a, quite a significant gap from John Kimmond in second place. It's a 9.8 second gap between first and second right now. So it looks like Russell Patterson has this race in his hands and has this race controlled. But this is racing. Anything can happen. This is the classic sports and saloon class, which of course, these cars are classic. They can be unreliable sometimes. It just takes one small thing to go wrong and your race can go the complete opposite way from what you were expecting. So Russell Patterson, although he almost has a 10 second lead, he, this is not home yet. He still has nine minutes left in this race and he has nine minutes to try and nurse the car home, just try and take it home. He will hopefully have a pit board on the start finish straight that will tell him, look, you have a nine second gap and he'll be thinking in his head, he's led races many, many times, I'd be thinking, right, okay, just take this home. But there, there we have the battle for third place, Andrew Graham hitting more bat markers right now and it's Martin Reynolds who's still on his tail end. He's still just trying to pile on the pressure and force Andrew Graham into a mistake. But Andrew Graham, he's not showing any letting up. He's not showing any mistakes currently because he is able to see John Kim and then sometimes having a car to chase in front of you makes your life so much easier. Although sometimes whenever it is a slower car, it makes your life very, very difficult as we've seen some cars getting held up from back markers. But Andrew Grimm does have a marker, does almost have a breaking marker. We've seen another car getting sideways as we wait for the race leaders and for the podium position guys to make their way through. There is John Kimman once again getting it sideways and there is the battle for third place. And now it's really bunched up because it looks like John Kimman has actually got held up that time around. He definitely has because you can just see the final two corners. He was stuck behind the two cars there, one of them being the number 50 car of Chris College. So it 
it would in such a nice looking car, almost in golf um, racing colours. So that is, of course, a mini um, that he is in. So now we come round turn three before we head down Park Straight and Park Straight. It's one of these straights which it's very, very difficult to even call it straight because it has a kink midway. The driver seems to get the car turned slightly to the left hand side of the track before they head over to the rise, before they head to Park Turn and part turn being turn four around the circuit. You see John Kimmon getting past the back markers there. He's getting past nice and neatly though. He's showing his front end and showing that he was there and the back marker just getting out of his way. But now it is Andrew Graham's turn to try and get past the back marker because if he gets held up for just one second, it's gonna be all in Martin Reynolds' hands to try and make a move. And we can see some fierce racing here, but it looks like Andrew Graham's just trying to find any way past that back marker there. And he looks like he has, I believe that's Pete Richards in the Clan Crusader. So Pete Richards getting out of the way now and now he is actually in the middle of the battle for third place. So now this is letting Andrew Graham on the loose. You can see that gap now has just widened a little bit, but now it's now it's time where Martin Reynolds just has to use his head because there's still seven minutes left in this race. So seven minutes left to try and bridge that gap because although the gap has widened, it is still not that big. It is all it takes is for one little walk up from Andrew Graham and then he's straight into the mix. Russell, Russell John Kimmins, sorry, once again, just getting that rear end out every single lap. You can just see him getting that rear end out and he's enjoying it. And that's what we love to see. That's almost why all these drivers are racing here today. Of course, they're racing because they want to win and they want to push their classic car to the absolute limit. By the end of the day, they're all doing this for fun and they're all doing this because they love cars and they love racing. A lot of these drivers as well will work on their cars in their spare time in their own garage. So it's really, really great to see. It's almost what racing used to be. So it's a classic representation of what we used to have with modern day drivers. And wow, these drivers are pushing on. Although these are classic cars, they are wringing their necks and they are pushing every single ounce of life out of this engine and out of their tires. These tires are really getting pushed to the limit, especially through these two corners, Park and Chris Curve. It's really just relying on the on your left tires as you turn right. You're really just leaning on them and hoping that they stick through. But anyway, the top 10 right now, it's still Russell Patterson who leads away with a 12.8 second gap. John Kimman in second with Andrew Graham third. Martin Reynolds trying to find any way past Andrew Graham um, with Alistair Batai in fifth. Elliot Patterson in sixth with Tim Mull in seventh, um, with Alistair Coates in eighth, with Gary Thomas in ninth. Craig Houston and Brandel are top ten right now, and it's a close race. And it's a close battle, actually, right now for what is third place. But right now, all eyes are on this battle, and all, are, are, all eyes are actually on them trying to get past some bat markers because we're seeing far more bat markers as we're 50 minutes into this race, just five minutes left. It's that stage of the race where we almost see, no matter where you're expecting, you have a car coming past you every five seconds. So you really just have to rely on your instinct and you have to know who you're racing as a driver here because Andrew Graham knows that he is not racing that bat marker and he knows that he just needs to find a clean way past rather than if he was racing with it, it just has to find any way past. So Andrew Graham right now, he's pushing on, still in that third place position as we head around to make it almost 16 minutes in this race, just four minutes to go. Of course, it's been a 20 minute race in beautiful, beautiful conditions here at Cadwell Park. It's, still, it's slightly clouded over, but it's still excellent conditions for what? It's going to be a great day of racing. This is, of course, only the second race of the day. These classic sports and saloon cars will have two races today. So they will have another opportunity to try and get Russell Patterson, who's bridged this gap now to 13.8 seconds. It was a 14 second lead. And it's one thing that now Andrew Graham is really, really going to have to push on and really going to have to just show every ounce of talent and craftsmanship that he has in his racecraft because now Martin Reynolds is not letting up. Three minutes left in this race, and Martin Reynolds is still as close as he was 10 laps ago, and it's one thing that we love to see about this classic class, is just the fact that although these drivers are in completely different classes and are in completely different cars from completely different time frames, it still produces wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing, and these guys, they will be smiling inside their helmets because they finally get to race these classic cars and get to race them in the conditions that they love on track, pushing them to their limit as we wait for the drivers to head round the hairpins. We see John Kimmon once again getting the rear end out with Andrew Graham. 
still trying to replicate John Kim in style of getting the rear end out as we head round um, as we head round Barnes to the start finish straight now with just three minutes to go in this race. Russell Patterson leads the way by 14 seconds now, and Andrew Graham is still trying to hold on to his third position with just three minutes to go. So now all eyes will be on Martin Reynolds to see. Can he find a way past? Can he get into that podium position? Because John Kimmond is up the road with Russell Patterson. And John Kimmond is four seconds up the road. So it does not look like they're going to be able to catch him. Unless if, of course, John Kimmond makes a mistake or he has some kind of mechanical failure as the two, four, seven of Pete Richards just getting out of control there in between the hairpin and barn. So there we have it, just snatching the car background to keep it straight and just getting cracked on that throttle to try to keep the car straight as we head round to make it 18 minutes actually into this race so just two minutes to go in this race about two laps left for these drivers and two laps to show and decide the podium position so now andrew graham he's gonna want to try push on he's gonna want just try hold on to this he's held on to this podium position for so long and this race it's thrown so much drama into the mix we've seen bat markers we've seen russell patterson making a terrible start but then somehow leading the way coming out the final corner and now we head around 18 and a half minutes into this race it's a 20 minute race russell patterson comes almost comes across start finish line now and when he'll come across the line we'll wait to see is he still opening up that gap between John Kim and that man right there in the lovely, lovely Rovar. So now we head round for what will be the last lap and what is going to be a very exciting lap. Russell Patterson will want to just hold on to this. He just has to bring it home for one more lap. Russell Patterson, it's been such a dominant performance. The gaps actually came down to 11 seconds now. So I wonder if Russell Patterson maybe is just taking it a bit easy and just trying to nurse the car home because he will know he has uh, over a 10 second gap over John Kimmon. John Kimmon though, be no surprise to drive in style. He's just been tail out almost every single corner. He has pure trust in that car and he's relying on it so much. So I wonder, Russell Patterson, he will be very, very warm. But Russell Patterson, of course, in that open, open roof car. So now he may get a little bit better of a breeze from the likes of Andrew Graham and John Kimmon but it's still so hard to race in these conditions. It's so, so hot. As we see Russell Patterson just trying to make his way through the final couple of, well, the final sector, really. And we just see him try to make it around the lapped car. He gets around nicely, gets around clean. He gets around safe. That's all which matters on this last lap is just getting it home, getting it home safely where you have this much of a gap. But Andrew Graham is still in that third place position as um, Craig Houston makes it into ninth demoting Gary Thomas into 10th. So war down the order, there's battles all the way down the field. And it's what we love about this class, it's sports and saloon class, is the fact that there's cars and there's battles absolutely everywhere and from all different eras. But right now, all eyes are on Russell Patterson as he takes a dominant, dominant performance. He comes around the final corner, Barnes, to take the checker flag of what was an amazing drive from him. Russell Patterson wins the race in a dominant, dominant fashion from John Kimmon. We wait for John Kimmon to cross the line to see what the gap will be coming across the line. It was 11 seconds last lap, and now this lap, the gap across the line was 10.6 seconds. So John Kimmon making some time up as Andrew Graham comes home in that third place, and Martin Reynolds couldn't make any way past. He could not find any way past for that podium position. But Russell Patterson, a dominant, dominant performance and a new lap record as he wins the race by 10.6 seconds from John Kimmons with Andrew Graham coming home in third with Martin Reynolds in fourth, Alistair Baptai in fifth, and Tim Mole in sixth, Elliot Patterson in seventh, Al Alad there and Coates coming home in eighth and Craig Houston ninth with Gary Thomas running at the top tens. We see the 56 car there with his bonnet up, stopped in the middle of the track, checking, maybe even extinguishing, check that everything's okay underneath the bonnet. That's Clive Gimson and he's he is not happy about that. I mean, it was the final lap and it looks like there may be some internal problems of his car. So that is not what you're wanting. And as I said earlier, these classic cars, they can be so unreliable and it's just shown on that last lap there. So just checking, everything's right. So he's just trying 
to make sure everything's right and get that car out for race two because of course these guys will be out again russell patterson will have another time out to try as he waves to the crowd and waves to celebrate what was such such a dominant win it was a 10.6 second win with andrew graham being three seconds behind john kimman so andrew graham also closing up that gap but martin reynolds just that final lap it looked like it got held up slightly from bat markers so it looked but the gap just widened as the race went on because, of course, bat markers, it's pure luck that you hit them. But Russell Patterson, dominant win, and he's waving to the crowd. He's celebrating. He's waving to all his fans. Everyone around the circuit, the cameras around the circuit, and also his team. And what a great victory. You can hear people clapping in the, cl in the crowd for Russell Patterson. Russell Patterson in the Morgan Plus 8. What a dominant performance it was from him. He was four seconds quicker than everyone else in qualifying. And once again, he's shown his pace and shown his potential in that car and shown that he knows how to lead the race and he knows how not to feel any pressure. Well, Russell, it's always an absolute pleasure to see these cars driven to an inch of their lives. Uh, how was that around Cadwell for you? Yeah, I love Cadwell Park. It's just one of the best circuits on the, on the planet that I've raced on. And uh, any chance I can get to come here, I do. And uh, yeah, that car is just superb round there. Yeah. Fantastic. There's a reason why it's called the Mini Nurburgring. Ring. It's, it's just something else, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You've got that sort of fast out, you know, fast sweeping where you've just been smooth all the way through the back end, and then you, you grab it and sort of, uh, you know, uh, yeah, you hold it on for life. Right? Pretty well through the <laughs> through the mountain down round uh, round by the hairpin. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, and they're heavy. You know, they're they're kind of hard work. Yeah. But never mind, I had the air conditioning on today. <laughs> you mean you had the roof down? Oh, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so same again for race two? Uh, yeah, one would hope so, yes. <laughs> just a nice gentle start and tease myself away if I can. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just see, never know. Well, go and enjoy this one uh, and good luck for race two. Thank you very much. Well, John, it's always great to see uh, the Rover out and it uh, didn't disappoint around Cadwell. Uh, second place overall and first in class, well done. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It, uh, I knew it would be... Um, off the line would be important and uh, a reasonable start considering it was a bit of a kerfuffle at the, at the beginning and then uh, yeah just uh, tried to not mess about too much it's quite tempting to drift it through these mountainous sections here but uh, yeah I did see the back end yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the back end did come out a few times through the forest it just wants to and it, I think it could be a, the most efficient line through the corners if timed correctly, but uh, <laughs> it's a fine line, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you get one, one, one wheel on the grass here, it's all over. I even find I was, I was crossing my hands so quickly for opposite lock that I caught my glove uh, under the other hand, you know, <laughs> so I sort of locked my hands together on the wheel for a moment uh, to fight the, the gloves. But, uh, yeah, so I'll maybe need to relax a little bit into that for the next one. So race two, uh, the start's all important to get ahead of uh, Russell. Yeah, it's unlikely I'll, I will get ahead or stay ahead, but that could be the only opportunity. <laughs> well, for now, go and enjoy the second place and the class win. Excellent, and some cold beverages, I think. It's roasting. Yeah. No beer. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> well done. Well, Elliot, um, first in class, uh, leaves you still third overall in the championship. Um, beautiful scene at Morgan, go around Cadwell. Yeah, I really do love this circuit, and it's great that the SMRC can come down here for our our way round once a year and hopefully get to keep doing it because it's it's pretty special and although we all love Knock Hill it's nice to get a break. So many different sections uh, around Cadwell, um, the tight twisty stuff going through the forest and then you've got a lovely sweeping back end corner around Charlie's and then the goose neck which is your favourite part? My favourite part is probably the first two or three corners where you can just carry huge speed up the hill um, just to dab with the brakes and just settle it all the way through. It's, there's not many tracks that have corners as fast as that in the UK, so it's, it's yeah. fun. Good. Same again for race two? That's the plan. Just most important things, finish, win your class, get the points, keep it going, try and win the championship. Um, so, yeah, just keep it up, really. Right. Well, for now, go and enjoy your class win, and uh, we'll look forward to race two. Yeah, thank you.